Mr. Friedman has a concern about the safety of smart meters. He does not have to have one. Is it PUC's decision that by allowing an opt-out, it can duck an obligation to consider the health or the trespass issues? Your Honor, all of these issues were before the commission in the earlier proceedings. The commission had a, had a proceeding on this and, and But it didn't decide any of those issues. No, no, Your Honor, it, yeah, the, the commission did not. The commission, in fact, declined to do the analysis to make the decisions about health and safety. The remedy for all of the concerns in those proceedings was to offer an opt-out. How about the members of the public that are not opting out? Isn't it the commission's responsibility to look out for their health and safety? And to make a judgment as to whether they're being unreasonably exposed to RF? Your Honor, nothing in the world can be made absolutely safe. So, are you admitting that they're not safe? Is it the PUC's position that these are safe enough? Your Honor, the, the, the public is, uh, is free to, uh, to have, uh, whatever concerns it, it, it would have. What the Commission is doing, as you present it, is saying it has declined to do the health and safety analysis. You're on your own. No, the, the Commission instructed the utility to, in its communication plan, to provide information to all of its customers about smart meters and so, links to the science that is out there. Uh, but, Mr. McComb, I, there's still all those people that have them. And for those people, you're saying that the state of affairs can be that the Commission can take no position on their safety? And leave it up to the utility? About a year ago, a good friend of mine got ill, and there was no apparent reason why. And then she realized that her electric utility had installed a new digital smart meter, a wireless electric meter, um, at the same time as she got ill. As I looked into it, thousands of people have had the same experiences. So I wanted to figure out, is this really happening? Are people truly getting sick because of radiation coming from electric meters? I grabbed a camera and interviewed as many people as I could from all around the world to find out what's been their experience and what do they know. I had no idea the level of startling information that we would discover along the way. I was hearing this banging on the basement door, which is the door that leads into the, the hydrometers that are in here. And so I, I leave my bed and I come down here <clears throat> and I, I sit right here on, on the step and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna film this. Um, sorry. Um, I'm just putting in your meters. Your power's gonna be out for about 20, well, when I find the meters, are they, they're down here, right? I'll show you the door. I had heard her banging, but I didn't know that she actually kicked the door in until she left. Because when, when she left, I came here and I found this on the ground. I was like, wow, she actually kicked the door in. We've since repaired the door. And we've put these, um, do not install a smart meter sign on our door. And apparently this wasn't the only case of a utility breaking and entering. The morning the guy came in to change the meters, this had been shattered. He had taken a deadbolt cutter and cut off our chain and basically pried their door open and walked right in here. And when he left, the chain was laying on the ground and it was broken, the lock was broken also. Vandalized the property um, and forced his way onto my property without buzzing any of the building buzzers. So with billions of dollars being spent all around the world with zero public input, and with all of these concerns coming to the fore, 
I realized that there had to be some serious commitment behind the scenes to push this grid through. A smart meter is um, part of a much bigger picture and a much bigger design. A smart meter is really just the attachment that goes on an outside of a, of a home or a business. A two-way transmission device that ties into the larger smart grid plans that are being built out across the world. In my research into this, I found that utilities around the world were stating that the smart grid will deliver enhanced energy security, reduced greenhouse gases, improved urban air quality, and increased grid asset utilization. To me, this sounded great on paper. Unfortunately, there are problems with how the systems work. The smart grid uh, systems are very uh, buggy. There seems to be a critical systemic issue with these misnamed smart meters. They're actually causing fires, in many cases, after they're installed. After hundreds of blazes with very few admissions of fault, the insurance adjusters are catching on. And he says, jump in the car, we just got a call, your house is on fire. It was true. Michael Capetto's upper Makefield home was going up, burning from a fire in his newly installed electric meter. Well, tonight there's a major development from Pico after at least two dozen fires and more than a dozen incidents of overheating. The energy giant is halting its controversial smart meter installation program. And they're being installed by people who are not very well trained for the most part. BC Hydro says it's removing 1,000 smart meters from homes across the province. The company says the move is just routine testing. So how many smart meter fires have there been? We've installed approximately 9 million smart meters and we have no reports of smart meters causing fires. Not one single report. We don't. The picture, this is probably the better side of the garage. I don't know if you can see it. The meters were over here. And so the fire department basically said that the meters started the blaze. If you just took one look at the one look at the wreckage and said smart meters and walked away and never mm -hmm, called mm -hmm. back or came back. Well, Brittany, you were saying earlier that there was no uh, smart meter fires, and this lady right here has pictures of her smart meter that exploded on our house. Josh, can I ask you to stop recording? PG knows that they do catch on fire when they are remotely turned back on when a customer who is delinquent in their bill finally pays their bill. These meters catch fire. They know it and they are covering it up. Taxpayer money has now gone to some of the largest corporations on the planet. General Electric, for instance, is the largest manufacturer of, of smart grids. They're being manufactured in China. As part of the 2009 U.S. bailout, $3.4 billion was funneled into a national smart grid stimulus, later increased to $11 billion. This created a scenario where utilities were given a massive financial incentive to go along with the program. And because they went after the stimulus money, they needed to have a certain amount of their meters deployed before they could recoup the cost. In addition to that, they started billing customers for these uh, smart meters prior, months prior to any actual deployment of these meters to the people's homes. So the consumers have been paying for these smart meters all along, even if they didn't have one. According to Time magazine, President Obama originally suggested pouring 100 billion into a smart grid at a time of economic crisis immediately following the 2008 election. Wikipedia reports that the U.S. government's primary reason for this unprecedented allocation of public funds is the eventual reduction in electricity usage by more than 4%. However, real-world evidence shows that installations of smart meters are not even producing any energy savings whatsoever. According to a senior assistant attorney for Illinois Public Utilities, quote, it's devastating to their plan. The report shows zero statistically different result. They're being found in pilot programs now, smart grids are, to really save no energy whatsoever. So who benefits? I got a bill in December for $1,107. There's got to be a mistake. No mistake, says PG&E. After reviewing their accounts, the company says their meters were working correctly, just like those of the 1,500 other Californians who complained. Consumer advocate Mindy Spatz says that still doesn't explain something else. Customers with the smart meters 
Scientists claim that their energy usage has inexplicably risen since the meters were put in. So in other words, it makes it look like they're all of a sudden they're using twice as much energy as they used to use. Exactly. An experiment by some students at Stanford is raising new questions tonight about the accuracy of PG&E's controversial new smart meters. People all over the state have been complaining about inflated bills. Seven on your side's Michael Finney is here now to tell us more about the students' experiment. Like so many others, these students' PG&E bill went through the roof at just about the same time their new smart meter was installed. We start the week with an explosive investigation into the massive mistakes being made with power bills. Serious flaws affecting every electricity user with a smart meter have been uncovered. And when this whistleblower told his power company what he'd found, they offered to pay him off. This exclusive investigation by James Thomas has sparked calls for a national inquiry. Why is it that in Ontario, California, Texas, Australia, all these other jurisdictions, the rates have been doubling and tripling, and this is a fact. And we are told that the bills are going to stay the same, it's actually going to bring the bills down, it's going to be more efficient, and all these things. Then when the bills go up, all these denials start to come in. Well, actually, you are just using more energy. The best one that I like to hear is actually the meter's more accurate. These cost increases from widespread systemic inaccuracies of smart meters are separate from the additional cost increases which will be based on time of use. It's all about money. We're going to be charged for time of use one day. It's coming. But hang on a minute. Isn't the whole point to lower electricity bills for everyone? I mean, what we're seeing so far with increased bills has to be just a bump in the road, doesn't it? Uh... You know, under my plan uh, of a cap and trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. thing I started to hear about was how this worldwide smart grid program was making the entire power grid vulnerable to cyber attack. A so-called smart grid that is as vulnerable as what we've got is not smart at all. It's a really, really stupid grid. The vulnerabilities of the internet are now being transferred to the importance of the power grid without 100% assurance that the internet or that connectivity is safe, we are bringing the potential to take down the power that runs this nation. There is a smart grid initiative in almost every industrialized nation happening at the same time. And what that provides is the potential for disaster to happen on a catastrophic scale. Even the US government is admitting that the smart grid now opens the door to cyber terrorism on a huge scale. The Washington Post reported on the Inspector General's findings that utilities and government didn't seem to care about the new hacking vulnerabilities. Energy officials knew of these weaknesses, but approved plans for the projects anyway. My journey of investigating deeper into this worldwide program began in British Columbia. They knew about smart meters years ago. They could have been talking about it, but they kept it quite secret. They thought perhaps they could introduce it, simply do it, and no one would respond. We'd all forget. And they designed legislation that would make this possible, the installation of the smart meters, because without the legislation, obviously, it would be going to the Utilities Commission, they'd be looking at it, they'd be assessing it, they'd be studying it, they'd be addressing all the concerns we're talking about now. That's their role, and that's been cut out of the process. It's a terrible idea. It, without the ability for the public to get honest, transparent answers from the government and from BC Hydro, they were left to their own devices. Which for many BC Hydro customers meant turning to the internet. 
and a quick Google search of smart meters will give you thousands of pages of bad news. We have a large number of British Columbians, over 100,000, that have not yet received meters, and it's because they don't want them. It has nothing to do with a lack of technology. It has nothing to do with the labor shortage. It's customers that are saying no. This is a mandate. This is being pushed down your throat by a company that is not responsive, by a government that is not responsible, and it's being done in a collusion that's designed to undermine the individual rights of individual people in communities across the country and around the world. So our provincial government has rewritten laws, is ignoring a democratic vote by all mayors and councillors, and is also ignoring resolutions for more than 50 local municipalities who have passed additional independent moratoriums on installation of these meters in their own cities. Despite numerous calls over several weeks, BC Hydro declined a request for an interview. Corex Utilities, the company installing the meters, didn't even want to return our calls. Do they have the right to refuse the new meter? The meters are a necessary upgrade to the electricity grid. Okay, but it, this is non-negotiable. You must have the new meter. They are a necessary upgrade to the electricity grid. Okay, I'll try this one more time. Legally, are you allowed to refuse the new meter? <laughs> You're uncomfortable with this question. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how best to answer that. What does it say about our political system? Have we completely gone the way of corporations? Is there any representation left? Well, I, I, I'm very reluctant to use the word fascism um, as a student of history. I mean, we're nowhere near that. But the corporatocracy is the word that I, I, I'm comfortable with. There is a worldwide privatization scheme it's really, I suppose, a new form of corporatism where governments are no longer masters of their own fate. And it starts to become clear that this same undemocratic process to covertly implement smart meters in my province of British Columbia was also the case in California, throughout North America, and around the world. So how could it possibly be the case that these corporations who are pushing for a global smart grid would continue with their plans despite an enormous list of potentially disastrous downsides? A massive part of the smart meter agenda is to literally track every single movement within a, a house. So every time somebody switches on a light, every time uh, somebody switches on an, an appliance. Each of these appliances has a unique code which is then effectively transmitted through the smart meter down the grid. So anybody that is minded to do so can hone in on an individual residence and actually track what is going on in that household. So they can figure out when is your refrigerator being used, when is your TV on, what are you, what are you doing with your energy? And they're going to start having a profile of you as an individual. A congressional research report all but concluded that smart meters in the United States are a violation of the Fourth Amendment. In no uncertain terms, the court has asserted that at the very core of the Fourth Amendment stands the right of a man to retreat into his home and there be free from unreasonable government intrusion. With smart meters, police will have access to data that might be used to track residents' daily lives and routines while in their homes, including their eating, sleeping, and showering habits, what appliances they use and when, and whether they prefer the television to the treadmill, among a host of other details. And while some utilities are still saying that all of the in-home private data they'll collect on you will be kept safely tucked away, another picture seems to be emerging. Here in California, utilities are already selling our private electricity usage data to third-party corporations for a profit. Rather than discourage this practice, the California Public Utilities Commission has actually encouraged it. In a 2011 press release titled, California Commission Adopts Rules to Protect the Privacy and Security of Customer Electricity Usage Data, comes the following. CPUC President Michael Peavy, our action today will protect the privacy and security of customer electricity usage data while enabling authorized third parties to use the information. Commissioner Timothy Allen Simon added, 
I support today's decision because it expands consumer and third-party access to electricity usage information. I hope this decision stimulates market interest. In the summer of 2013, these newfound intentions became evident. The San Francisco Chronicle revealed that California's electric utilities last year disclosed the energy use records and other personal information of thousands of customers to agencies within the U.S. government. As General Petraeus has said, make no mistake about it, we have the ability to spy on your households through your appliances. And if we have that ability, we probably will use it. I mean, this is control freakery. It is the wet dream of the technocrats. People who live locked in a left brain construct that has no room for anything spiritual in their lives. Last year, we discovered that Verizon have a patent for a piece of technology that they're calling the Smart TV Detection Zone. And this product will sit next to your television and be capable of eavesdropping on your conversations whilst you're watching TV. So we'll be able to determine, for example, who's in the room, who's watching TV, what you're talking about, and how you're talking about it. How far does that go? Where does it stop? At what point do we draw the line? Let's look, for example, at the CISPA bill. That's the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, which was intended to legalize transferring all your data from mega corporations to the government. Now, this seems to be in violation of our Fourth Amendment rights uh, against unreasonable search and seizure, but it's already passed the House. Fortunately, the Senate has so far refused to vote on it. Recognizing the pushback to CISPA, apparently the Obama administration has created a covert agreement with the Justice Department to grant immunity to all these communication companies and internet companies that were already sharing the data. And now, as of June 12, 2013, a new aspect of that goes into effect, which expands this whole authorization to cover all critical infrastructure sectors. And that includes energy, health, and finance. What you're seeing is the establishment of a sur of surveillance society. You're, you're seeing the establishment of a surveillance network. It raises the specter of kind of the rise of soft tyranny. It raises the specter of you're automatically suspicious until we prove that you're not. It raises the specter of a universal, uh, I call it a universal wiretap, a persistent universal wiretap on every single person. Or if it's not, they can create one. Because, and what happens if they don't like you? What happens if you speak ill will against the government? What happens if you say something they consider disloyal? I mean, that's not the country that, that I took an oath to defend four times in my government career.
what more do you need to know? But most people seem to be want to just close their mind to it and just say, oh, the government wouldn't do that and, you know, that can't be true. It is true. And once you know it's true, you get this question in your mind of how did they think they could get away with it and what in the world are they trying to do with all this data? Why do they need to get into our lives this deeply? My research has led me to believe that the controlling elite uh, are trying to create a global cashless currency and one of the ways that they intend to do this is to base it on carbon credits. Basically what that means is they're going to dole out your use of energy dependent on your behavior and they want to be able to control it themselves. So these things that they're installing, the meters and the appliances with both sending and receiving transmitters would allow them to not only monitor but to control every appliance in your house. What is it that makes the government think that they can usher us into a totalitarian state at all, much less without us even noticing? It seemed to me that whether it's a terrorism threat or an apparent energy crisis, or an obsession to modernize technology without purpose, what's being consistently implied is that we must now willingly give up our basic human rights. I had to wonder, what if we are being systematically fed a false paradigm? Scarcity is the nightmare that's lurking in everyone's mind. It's what's driving a lot of our emotional reactions to everything that we face. It's that lurking fear that things are going to run out. And that's natural because, you know, evolution has seen us through hard times, our ancestors. So it's not a bad thing that we do have these fears, but they've overcome our ability to look at the reality, which is that we don't live in a condition of scarcity. There is no shortage of energy on this planet. The sun is the source of all, and the sun produces quadrillions of times the amount of energy we need. I've personally had the privilege of visiting numerous laboratories where inventors are successfully creating technologies which access off-grid energy in whole new ways. And it's really exciting to see. Sadly, most of these have been raided and shut down. And the Federation of American Scientists have actually acknowledged publicly on their website that over 5,000 of these alternative energy technologies uh, have been suppressed, have been confiscated in the process of applying for patents. This whole smart meter fiasco could go away very quickly if these alternative energy technologies were simply allowed to flourish. Now, that's not going to be in the agenda of the controlling elite. That's going to be up to us. I looked into it, and it turns out the U.S. government has actually created a law for the suppression of inventions. The patent laws allow any interested agency, including the Atomic Energy Commission, to shut down any patents if they consider them to be detrimental to the national security. With six of the world's seven largest companies in the oil and gas industry, could it be possible there's a vested interest in preventing decentralized clean energy pulling strings at this level of depth? And incredibly, in July of 2013, Spain actually taxed the sun, setting a fine of 30 million euros for violators who collect sunlight for their own use. While billions and billions of taxpayer dollars continue to be spent for a centralized control grid, are we still expected to believe that this has anything to do with going green? Whenever human beings are invested historically in a particular technology, then power structures build up around that that fight for their own interest just at a time when a change is about to take place to a better way of doing things. They fight for their existence like a creature fights for its existence. They are the dinosaur that is just about to become extinct, which is the need for overly centralized power producers. And that this is a bid to have a device in the home which gives them both control and future capabilities of broadcasting and receiving through the home. Industry and government are forcing these into the households of people without their choice and without informing them about what could be the outcome. 
And whatever is happening to Americans with this technology is going global. Every one of these energy companies in the United States is embedded in an international grid of energy delivery. And they're working to control every household across the world using this kind of technology. Wait a minute, this is not what I asked you to do. All I asked you to do is deliver electricity to my house, not monitor my house, not broadcast throughout my house. When I was in Silicon Valley in 1980, this was being discussed. It was who was going to take over the home, the energy companies? Was it the phone companies? Was it the energy companies? Whose line of access to the home was going to allow a single point of access to the home? But it didn't escape everyone that what, however they delivered everything to you made you totally dependent, gave complete access, and could be a two-way street. But what no one knew at that time was that a method of technology would be used whose byproduct was essentially radiation. Miss Lawson? Our power was, ex was um, cut off on February 11th, 2013, and we have not had power in seven weeks. And because I installed that radio frequency meter on our property, my sisters had fevers of over, <clears throat> excuse me, over 102 Fahrenheit, and they kept on going up. This is not normal. This should not be tolerated. Okay, I want a high-level person from DWP to connect with this family find out exactly what's going on, and it, let's fix it immediately. Unfortunately, when I complained about the smart meter put on our property, I was told there was no smart meter on our property. It's a radio frequency meter. When I began to express to LWP the health concerns that came out of nowhere, they told me that I was making it up. It didn't make any sense. My husband and I had numerous people come to our house and explain to us that it must be something else in your home. So I began writing to the general manager, Mr. Nichols. He ignored my emails. So for months and months and months, I have begged DWP to please take this off of our property. And we have had no power for seven weeks and one day. Easter for our children was horrible. Okay, thank you. We'll get to the bottom of that today. I want is is. I want somebody on the phone right now. Is anybody on here looks from like, DWP? Looks like Tom's on the phone right now. And Mr. Buscaino, I'm on this, so I will one way or the other find out what's going on with the uh, Lawson family. We'll have, I'll find out today. So the very next day after the city council meeting, our power was turned on. DWP came to the house. So we've had power since April 1st, um, 2013. Right. And, I mean, uh, how does it feel to to take a stand and then to to ultimately for the situation to be corrected? Um, well, it feels great to actually go out there and say fight for what you believe in, and not just sit on the sidelines and say, "Oh, well, this is happening. There's nothing I can do about it," but just actually know that you can do something about it, and that you can't give up. Just always fight for what you believe in. In May of 2011, the World Health Organization classified radio frequency radiation as a class 2B potential cancer-causing carcinogen. The utility companies will tell us that the meters are only on for 45 or 60 seconds a day and that they're safe. So the next stop on my journey to verify the facts was with Dr. David Carpenter, a Harvard-trained researcher at the University of Albany, New York. Under court order, Pacific Gas and Electric admitted that their smart meters generate 14,000 spikes of communication per day. The utilities have often held that smart meters are not a problem because they communicate with the utility rather infrequently, maybe a couple of times an hour. That doesn't matter how frequently they communicate to the utility. What matters is how frequently do they generate radio frequency fields. And clearly the utilities have been hiding the fact that these smart meters generate these radio frequency fields almost continuously. They're pulses, but they're very, very frequent. So according to PG&E's court documentation, the average smart meter is on for 45 or 60 seconds a day, but they've conveniently withheld from us that 
these 45 or 60 seconds are split up into 10,000 or more pulses, each at about four and a half milliseconds in duration, emitting all the time, every few seconds, 24 seven. And some meters are up to 190,000 pulses per day. So this is a smart meter bank. It's inside a Northwest DC condominium building and there's 32 different smart meters inside this building. So what I did was I brought in a meter that measures the levels of radio frequency radiation and what I'm finding is that these smart meters are emitting radiation every few seconds. But Pepco says smart meter communications take place every four to six hours. So I brought these findings to Pepco spokesman Marcus Beal who said I can't account for a, for a test that we, you know, there are a lot of variables involved that, that you know, we can't account for uh, with a test that we're not at, present at. But, uh, you know, we're, we're confident in, in the specs of our meters and, and the, the safeness of the meters at this point. So I asked Pepco if we could go out with their experts to do their own test. They told me they would look into it. And just to be clear, we're not saying whether or not this radiation is dangerous. That's up to the scientists, and it is currently the subject of a very heated debate. The definition of a smart grid is a wireless system that will fundamentally turn every single appliance in your home into the equivalent of a transmitting cell phone. That's every, every computer, every television, every furnace, every air conditioner, every coffee machine, every printer. Every single appliance that you have in your house will eventually, in a smart grid, have an antenna that's embedded into it that will transmit your usage data to a smart meter on the outside of your home that will then transmit your usage data to another tower receiving a usage signal that will then go to the utility company for supposedly billing purposes. Not all signals will just be about your individual use. There will be aggregate uh, meters that will bounce signal from house to house to house within a neighborhood that will then accumulate all of the usage data that will transmit that to the utility company. Now, what that will do is that the end metering system that is transmitting all of that data will be firing an RF signal at many, many times a second, which will increase the average homeowner's radio frequency radiation exposure Exponentially. This picture shows some aphids on the leaf of an orange tree shortly after radar equipment was installed at a nearby airport a number of years ago. I noticed that every few seconds all the aphids would tense up in unison and do sort of a little dance as you see in the picture. Upon further investigation I found that the interval of time between the activity of each dance coincided exactly with the rotation of the radar rotor device at the airport, which was a distance of approximately 14 miles. And we now have vast amounts of published science on microwave radiation and health effects. The data we're gonna look at are all published science, testing results, or public standards. At the bottom end of the radiation scale of what's called power density or signal strength is the minimum level at which cell phones will work, which was found to be 0.2 billionths of a microwatt per centimeter squared. Pine needles were found to age prematurely at 0.000027. At short-term exposures of 0.5, children aged 8 to 17 experienced headache, irritation, concentration difficulties, and behavioral problems. Point one is the bow biology or building biology guideline for extreme concern. 1.0 produced sperm DNA fragmentation and a decrease in sperm viability in vitro. Also at 1.0, the science shows the following bodily effects can occur. Headaches, dizziness, fatigue, insomnia, chest pain, difficulty breathing, and indigestion. 2.5 saw altered calcium metabolism in heart muscle cells. 4.0, changes in the hippocampus affecting brain memory and learning, and at 6.0, DNA damage in cells. So where are smart meters on this list? Electrical Power Institute in December 2010 measured a single ITRON smart meter with pulses up to 7.93 microwatts per centimeter squared. Our own testing indicated approximately 8.0 with one meter. These tests are at a close distance, approximately one foot away from the meter, but an infant's crib could be just as close on the other side of the wall where the meter or bank of meters are installed. 
Even though there are all these known health effects at levels far lower, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Luxembourg see fit to set the standard at 9.5, and China, Poland, and Russia, 10.0. This is the same level at which behavior has been altered, producing reflexes of avoidance following 30-minute exposures. A room of 12 smart meters, very common and even a conservative number in an apartment building, tested at 19.8 microwatts per centimeter squared. This is hundreds of times higher than levels which clearly indicate harmful effects. So how can utilities and governments get away with forcing these devices on everyone? This is how. In Canada and the US and several other civilized countries, the safety limit is set at 600 to 1000 microwatts per centimeter squared. This so-called safety limit is literally tens of thousands of times higher than levels which are known to damage health, according to peer-reviewed published science. There was an organization called the Committee on Man and Radiation. Essentially, the Committee on Man and Radiation intellectually framed this as a controversy that uh, there was no such thing as a non-thermal effect. Um, that thermal effects were the only uh, good science, and they had good science on their side, and anyone who said otherwise um, was either a crank or uh, needed to be dismissed from, from, from the, the, the area altogether. One website in Central California has posted more than 300 letters received from those suffering functional impairments since having their meter, quote, upgraded. The one thing all these people had in common? Their utility did not tell them the dangers associated with the new meter. Our concern is that smart meters add to this multiple source exposure to radio frequency radiation. Radio frequency radiation that we know causes a variety of biological effects and where we have very strong evidence that it causes disease, specifically brain cancer and other diseases. There have now been more than 6,000 published scientific studies on the health effects of microwave radiation since the 1930s. And with the vast majority showing that there is some biological damage being done, the jury's no longer out on whether this is harmful. Even by 1972, we have the US Navy producing an unclassified report of health effects on the human body observed from microwave radiation, summarizing more than 2,300 studies five pages of observed human health effects in this report include headaches and insomnia. I was walking by and I got like a flash headache. It's painful. How many times did that happen? Every time I walked by it, which was a bunch of times. Vagimometic or irregular action of the heart. They were installed in my house and shortly after that, I've started experiencing pretty significant heart palpitations. Anxiety. I was nervous a lot and I couldn't sleep. Chest pains. I started getting this intense chest pain. And changes in the operation of implanted cardiac pacemakers. Well, my heart would speed up to do about 170 beats a minute and uh, I could normally control uh, any arrhythmia that I would have before just by meditation and relaxing and uh, the smart meter I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't bring it down. And you but, found that when you were in that electromagnetic field, your heart was yes. going to high rates of arrhythmia. Yes, and it, it wouldn't happen all the time. It happened the, uh, the first time was, well, was eight months after the meter was installed. Yep. And then the second time it occurred was six months after that. And then it went four months after that and then went two months after that. Was so you became more and more sensitive? More and s more sensitive as the time went by. And you found that when you were able to remove the meter that you did recover? Correct, yes. Yeah. Another serious health complaint about these devices is what's known as dirty electricity, caused by the converter between DC and AC current. It appears that utilities do not wish this aspect of the health issue to become widely known. I can't tell you how many people have called me uh, who became dreadfully ill the, the minute one of those got put on their house. Dirty electricity is, the best synonym is electrical pollution. 
we understand air pollution, there's clean air, there's polluted air, there's clean electricity, and there's polluted electricity. Dirty electricity is the major pollutant that comes into your house on your wires, riding piggyback on the 60 cycle. The real evil about the, the smart meters is everybody gets one, the, the whole neighborhood. I mean, every house in a development, every apartment in a building has got one of these things. Each one's got a switching power supply in it, and they're all big generators of dirty electricity, and I'm certain it's the, it's the device that changes the AC to DC. After having 12 upgraded meters installed on her bedroom wall, Rosa Perrick began experiencing headaches and insomnia. I lived through Nazis, communist soldiers, uh, Cossacks. Nobody damaged my health as much as smart meters did. This is supposed to be my golden years. Instead, these are my bloody years. You did not give me all option. When you came and installed, you did not give me option. I didn't have no option. You came after me. You deceived me. I have something to show you. This is my... I have no control when I'm going to bleed, when my nose is going to bleed. This is the blood from my nose. I cannot even sleep on my own bed anymore. I have to close the door to the bedroom and sleep on chairs in the living room or put the mattress down, sleeping bag on the floor. Uh, do you ever have nosebleeds away from your apartment? I'm sorry, your time is up. Thank you very much. I appreciate your, you coming. Your time is up. Your time is up. Thank you. I made a call to a government agency. I started to talk about the problems with the meters, and he was getting agitated. And he said, "It's just they're just like cell phones. There's there's nothing wrong with these meters. They're just like cell phones." And I said. No, it's not true. There's a problem with these meters in the switch mode power supply. And he said to me, how do you know about switch mode power supply? And I said to him, what is your name? And he hung up on me. And then about 10 minutes later, he called me back on a different phone. And he told me there is a problem with the switch mode power supply. He knows about this, but he can't talk. And I think that a lot of people are scared to talk. And a lot of people know what's going on here. Electricians know, people at Con Edison know, but I don't think they know what to do. I would say that it's better to do the right thing because when people are silent, a lot of people can die. All right, we're getting on the plane to go to Salt Spring for the day. Looking forward to it after comedy of errors this morning. And, uh, here we are. Beautiful day. Away from the city, we wanted to track what was happening with this agenda in a small community called Salt Spring Island, where we were hearing around 30% of the population had locked up their analog meters or otherwise made it clear in writing to their utility that they were choosing not to have a meter installed. I personally was glad to get on a plane, hoping to clear my head with a visit to one of the quieter parts of the world, while still getting to the bottom of the story there. We know that you have refused a smart meter. Okay. The meter that will be installed onto your premises here will not be functioning as a smart meter because there are no receivers established. You get what everyone is calling a smart meter, uh, none of which are smart meters okay. yet. Because you will guarantee me that we will not have it functioning as a smart meter. Because long, you're off dog. Because we're off dog. Yes, yes, I guarantee you. will guarantee that. me that. And if you okay. want, I will get BC Hydro, I will get Gary to write you a letter to that extent. And okay. he'll send it registered mail. So, Chris, are they going to be running this as a smart meter or just as a regular meter? They're going to be running this as a regular... Um, digital meters such as has been put on uh, houses since 2008. So Chris has the meter on now and he's going to test the uh, 
That's the meter. So, yeah. Okay, they're lying, folks. This is emitting. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they're lying. Getting a reading on your... Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's over 20,000 microwatts, and the hydro has officially lied, publicly lied in front of all these people, lied to the, the owners of this house, to the effect that this would not be emitting radio frequency radiation, it's emitting radio frequency radiation in space. They have lied. Yeah, you have lied, you son of a bitch. That you have lied. Is, that you is and really, your really, really bad. I'm yeah. so upset. Yeah. I'm so upset. You lied to us. Really you lied to us. You said that there's not going to be any any radiation coming off that. So you're lying to us. I have no idea of the testing mechanism of this. I have no idea who you are. You know, how do you think I, I feel right now? I trusted you. I trusted you, I trusted you right and that's I how I honestly right feel. Okay. I feel like I've been raped. Uh, but this smart meter program, we're stepping across the line from democracy to corporatocracy, and that's scary. The, the person who invented the word corporatism was Benito Mussolini. Uh, it's also known as fascism, and it's, everybody uses that, that term a little too loosely, uh, but in this case it applies very, uh, very succinctly. It, um, if, you have not, if you don't have the right to a healthy environment, you have basically lost all rights. People who haven't the faintest idea that they had a smart meter installed are getting very sick all of a sudden and wondering why. And suddenly it comes to them that, oh, something's different about my electricity meter. I'm a beekeeper, or I was a beekeeper. For over 10 years, I had two hives on my side porch outside of the rain. About a year ago or so, I had a smart meter installed outside of my knowledge with all the EMF. This winter, I've lost all my bees. I don't know if it's because of colony collapse disorder, or I don't know if it's because of the EMFs from the smart meter, but it is suspicious. The consequences of this development have also been predicted by the critics for many decades and can no longer be ignored. Bees and other insects disappear. Birds avoid certain areas and are disoriented in other locations. Humans suffer from functional disorders and diseases. And those that are hereditary are passed on to the next generation as existing defects. Despite overwhelming evidence of biological harm from this type of electromagnetic radiation, the utility industry has assumed the safety of smart meters without doing any testing. For the past 29 years, Dr. Dee Kun Lee has conducted original research and epidemiology for Kaiser Permanente in Oakland, California. I'm not aware of any uh, safety studies has been done to examine the safety of a smart meter. To me, a manufacturer wants to give a product to consumer, especially in this case to everybody, impose on everybody. They are the ones who should carry the burden to prove it is safe safe before they can give to other people. It's not up to consumer to 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 demonstrate they are unsafe. It's a it's a technology done by private companies, these electric companies, private companies that have the right to install this on your house, destroy your health, and there's no accountability at all. While industry has failed to do any peer-reviewed studies on smart meters and health effects, a growing body of independent research is now starting to accumulate. It is our experience as physicians that everybody is equally electrosensitive. You install this thing, measurably certain things in your health go down. You know, we, we're tracking now certain sensitive parameters of it. One is an inflammatory marker called TGF beta 1. It goes way, way up as soon as the smart meter is installed. Uh, the MMP9, that's the metalloproteinases, go way, way up. These are inflammatory markers. The copper level in the serum goes up as a sign of chronic inflammation driven by something that's suddenly there. Um, the hormones go way off, the neurotransmitters go way off. So we have lab tests that we can show. Here's the patient, we monitor him for 10 years before, he was completely normal. The smart meter was installed six months later, the patient looks like a dying patient from the lab work. And we find those changes even in people that say, well, my wife is sick since the smart meter's in there, but I'm totally healthy. But if you look at the lab work, it looks just as bad 
Yeah, so some people have an awareness of health and goodness in them, and other people don't. But from what our experience is that everybody is affected by it. It's not just a few 3% of electrosensitive people. Did you, did you hear about people coming to you as far as, uh, as, far as having complaints about uh, illness? We were made aware of health complaints following installation of smart meters, and we wanted to verify this uh, using our field work. So I measured the field of about 30 different people while they stood one foot in front of the smart meter, and in every single case, the uh, human energy field was obliterated as they stood in front of the smart meter. We wanted to then uh, verify this at the physical level using dark field microscopy. And then we also did a control group to find out if the old analog meters had the same effect on the blood as the smart meter. So in our first slides what we see is normal cells and the structure of the cells is intact and sound. This is what we would expect from a normal sample. With the subject standing one foot in front of the analog meter, there were no significant changes to these blood samples in any of the three that we tested. In our second set of tests, we're using the smart meter. Before the exposure, we see the same thing as we saw in the first samples. Normal cell walls, fairly separated and looking healthy. So after two minutes of exposure in front of the smart meter at about one foot away, we see a totally different story. Sample one, you can see a lot of degradation in the cells. The cell walls have been broken, and you see changes in the cells, which are called mycoplasma. It shows a mutation to the cell. In the second sample, we see a different type of degradation to the cell membranes. You can see a corrugation here. This is called bottle cap formation, and it's known that this occurs due to oxidation or uh, exposure to free radicals. So this third subject, uh, when we did her sample, she had to be pulled away from the meter after 45 seconds because she complained about an increasingly severe headache. And here you see a phenomenon called rouleau, where the red blood cells are stacking up, which makes it very difficult for the blood to deliver oxygen to the tissues as they would be their normal function. Every single one of these is a degradation. Every single one of these shows a trauma to the blood cells and that came from something and the only variable was the smart meter. The good news in all this is the patient and the blood can return to normal once they have been removed from the influences of these stressors. So this thing about electrosensitive three or five percent of people are, are affected and everyone else is okay, I mean what, what do you have to say about that? Well everybody we've tested so far has been affected and we know everybody that I tested to see if there was a change in the body's energy field, every single person I tested was affected. So three out of three people were affected negatively. Uh, one of them became symptomatic. The other two didn't have any noticeable symptoms, yet the changes showed up in the blood. Uh, there are changes whether they feel them or not. Maybe they're not out there complaining about it or trying to make other people aware of what it's doing to them, yet they're still being affected by it. While most of industry continues to use fine print and loopholes to evade accountability, there is a worldwide paradigm shift steadily underway. 60,000 doctors in the American Academy of Pediatrics are paying attention. and teachers unions, this one of 45,000, are beginning to speak out against Wi-Fi in the classroom. Some regions are taking steps to cut the power of cell phone masts by 90%. And in many areas, towers are starting to come down altogether. But governments such as the U.S. want smart grids and high-powered Wi-Fi mesh networks to blanket everywhere and everything. As industry cleverly camouflages itself, concealing the harm it is doing. Amazingly, our centers of medicine are seeking to bathe newborns in wireless. And this has continued on because the official line is that microwave radiation is safe. And the radio frequency radiation work that we did 
was supported by Motorola. The relationship was really very cordial and very stress-free, but only up until we started generating data. They, these folks were very, very upset and began to talk about how are they going to handle this, what sort of spin can we put on this, what can we expect from this, and from that point on the relationship changed. What we saw was that Motorola began to exert more and more control over the work, telling us what to do, telling us how to write abstracts, what to say in the abstracts, what to say in the papers, how to do the work. No, don't do this. Yes, do it this way. This was unacceptable. I had completed our study of DNA damage and I submitted the final report to Motorola. The point is I kept getting nothing from these people. They, they simply weren't willing to accept my interpretation of my study, my evaluation of my study, my knowledge of science at that point, and tried to urge me not to publish the study. They didn't tell me not to, they just said, no, this isn't ready for publication, and they wanted me to do more work. I, I think one has to exercise caution at this point, and what makes the cellular telephone research area so difficult right now is there is no money available for research other than that that's coming from industry. So, I mean, what, is, what does this do? I don't have any faith in what comes out. I have absolutely none, not with my dealings with industry so far. When I filed my initial complaint, um, Central Maine Power responded with a 250-page basically rebuttal on why smart meters are so safe, and they hired Exponent, which is a science and consulting firm that has represented the tobacco industry. They've represented the asbestos industry. Um, so this is a firm that industry hires to prove that dangerous products are safe. In 1996, Congress passed the Telecommunications Act, which included a provision called Section 704 that took away state and local government's rights to resist antennas on health or environmental grounds. They knew that they were on very shaky ground when they put this into place. The legislation was actually written by the industry. It was also the first time in history that industries of all stripes were invited into congressional chambers and asked essentially for their wish list. And the telecommunications industry, like other industries, just rushed right in and gave them their wish list. It took away your state and local government's ability to protect you, to protect children, schools, every environment from this kind of radiation. I mean, this is ludicrous. This is unconstitutional. But this reflects the power that the communications industry has with our Congress. And now there's a new bill called the Smart Grid Advancement Act of 2013, designed to completely remove the limited local discretionary control that still exists. If passed, this bill would grant the federal government unprecedented powers to forcibly deploy this smart microwave and surveillance program upon all states, regions, and everyone in the nation. What's going on here? This is a wireless device, which is unproven scientifically, which all the evidence so far proves is dangerous or questionable, which should therefore be studied intensely before it's released to the public. Clever people called the technology smart to make it seem intimidating so no one would question it. Some smart ad man came up with that and got paid $300,000 to call it a smart meter so you would feel less knowledgeable, which they know we feel, and then you wouldn't question the smart people putting it in your house. So I call them not smart meters, dangerous meters. I started wondering how are our future generations being affected by this unprecedented increase in electromagnetic radiation. I had a son that was going to school at San Diego State University and he called me and he said, Mom, I've got the worst headache. He says, I'm projectile vomiting all over my apartment. And I said, get to the hospital. 
and the uh, emergency room doctor at uh, Sharps Memorial Hospital in San Diego called me and he said, your son has bleeding in the brain and I said, we'll be there immediately. And my son had surgery that evening when he got out. Dr. Tanawai told us that my son had brain cancer and it was either the very worst or the second worst type of brain cancer you could have. It was nothing but chaos for seven months. We moved him back home and had to pack everything that he owned in California and brought him home and he only survived just shy of seven months and he died October 11th of 2008. August 7th of 2009, um, I uh, typed in cancer clusters and I saw SDSU, San Diego State University brain cancer cluster. And I read this, I read this article over and over and I just, I, I think I just, it put me in shock and I ended up on the floor for the rest of the day. But, um, 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 sorry. I realized they were talking about my son. So I immediately started contacting SDSU, the administration, and I felt myself just being bounced around. Nobody wanted to deal with me. So I uh, got in my car and I drove out to San Diego for the whole month of October of 2009. And I went over onto the campus. In these articles, they talked about a cell tower. And I went over there, and there's this huge cell tower that's outside of this building, which towers above Nassateer Hall and Room 131, where all these kids um, and people have come down with um, brain cancer. My son, Rich Farber, died October 11th of 2008, and he was in Nassateer Hall, Room 131, Professor Charles Cutter died June 19th, 2008, Nassateer Hall, Room 131. Lou Terrell, diagnosed with primary lymphoma brain cancer in 2008. He was in the room right next to Room 131. Dwight Anderson died in 2008, Nassateer Hall. Miss Laurel Lam Tower died August 29th of 2010. Richard Funston, died and he was also um, located in NASA Tier Hall, room 131. I just think that this wireless stuff, we just need to get a handle on it and warn the public. But I just want parents to know and I want kids to know that these are very dangerous and these are on many, many college campuses. A reporter from the San Diego Tribune that I had contacted actually called me at home and he said this story will never get out in San Diego. And I said, why? And he said, because of money. After having interviewed more than 70 people from four countries, witnessing the profound emotion from those whose lives have been ruined, I felt myself wondering if I could ever really make a difference against corporations that are so powerful and so willing to put money before life itself. So here's UPA installers crossing over locked fences and against consent. On January 23rd, with premeditated malice and forethought, our city manager, in collusion with our city's administrative police chief, ordered an all-out assault on many of the citizens' personal property by cutting locks, illegally trespassing, threatening tax-paying citizens, mostly women and elderly, and actually arrested two of our stay-at-home moms on trumped-up charges for refusing installation of smart meters. Get off my property right now. No! No! When the full force of the city's police department is turned on its own people, it's time for a radical 
an immediate change. Now, I just spoke with Naperville city manager uh, a few minutes ago who says the city is within its legal rights to enter private property and install those smart meters, the meters they say are their property. He also says that the meters are safe. He also says the women deserve to be arrested if they violated the law. But exactly what those misdemeanor charges are, we still don't exactly know. I'm one of the homeowners who had his property rights violated even though by certified mail I notified the city manager I would not participate in this federally sponsored voluntary program and would not accept the extortionary alternatives provided. As a result, I'm asking for city council to fire the city manager, the acting police chief, the police officers who participated in this travesty, and any city employee who advised them that they had the right to do so. As far as I know, we still live in the United States of America and not communist China. Thank you. There will be a five-minute recess until you settle down and obey the rules, or we won't continue. We have a five-minute recess. This is thankfully a contrast to the behavior of most city councils who are made aware of the facts. One of the first U.S. states where these devices were deployed was California, where dozens of local governments have issued moratoriums against the rollout. I vigorously support this action today. I'll be voting in the affirmative both on the moratorium and on Supervisor Kinsey's proposal to send letters to the governor. This action that we're taking today and one that I support is a political action. And don't be deceived that political actions don't work. Think about the American Revolution. Ms. Wolf? Aye. Ms. Farr? Aye. Mr. Lavignino? Aye. Mr. Carvajal? Aye. Ms. Gray? Aye. We represent people and they, they can get pushed so far and then they say that we've had enough. And I think that that's what's going to happen. Many have now criminalized installation and are fining the utility for every device they attempt to install. As a result of a grassroots movement to spread awareness, the vast majority of U.S. states and Canadian provinces have active groups who are fighting back. And worldwide, the trend continues. Many are asserting their rights for the first time in their lives. But utilities still are not yielding. And in many areas, they're attempting to impose fees for those who do not want their so-called upgrades. Their idea is to have an opt-out. If we do an opt-out, they're all bending towards charging us to opt-out from a product that we did not want to begin with. An opt-out is an agreement to pay to not be harmed. An opt-out is volunteering into extortion. An opt-out says that if I don't pay you, you have the right to harm me. So that, that doesn't work. They are embarking on a monstrous act of deception. They are saying one thing, but you're getting something else. And I see that as a form of extortion. You either take our energy the way we want to give it to you or we're going to cut it off that's extortion that's a criminal offense as a, a fraud cop i just i'm just wondering when the world's going to wake up you put a story out there it's wrong but what the heck we're going to go with it we're going to look you straight in the eye and we're going to lie to you what are you going to do about it what would you recommend from your experience that people may not understand or that you've gone through what they should do or what they should know? They should know that they can change that meter and they should do that. That is the most important part of it, is to change that meter over. The, the utilities have something called, a legal mechanism called uh, implied consent, whereby our silence is golden to them. We've given them consent by being quiet. We can't afford to be quiet on this. We have to take action. This is a game changer. These companies are betting on you saying nothing. They're betting on you 
quietly complying with their wishes to install these smart meters on your property. You have the right to refuse a smart meter on whatever grounds you deem appropriate. If you The consequences of this development have also been predicted by the critics for many decades and can no longer be ignored. Bees and other insects disappear. Birds avoid certain areas and are disoriented in other locations. Humans suffer from functional disorders and diseases. And those that are hereditary are passed on to the next generation as existing defects. When you look at the study you did with mice, do you think there's a chance that within the third generation of females, they may be irreversibly sterile? Not in the third generation, but in the fifth generation, and that would for humans be something in the order of 150 years ahead of us. And of course, then it's too late to say that you are sorry, and it's very too late to say stop. So I would suggest that you have uh, at least for the time being, uh, a moratorium, a stop to these systems, use a wide in the meantime, and uh, check out for effects of radiation. So I think it's really time to have an independent compilation of data. Uh, such was done at August 31st, 2007, in the form of the Bioinitiative Report, of which I was one of the authors. And then we put together approximately 2,000 scientific references on a little bit more than 600 pages, clearly saying if you are a rat or a mouse or a cell or a molecule, you should definitely not allow yourself to be exposed to this. And in the meantime, we have this full-scale experiment using our own kids. A considerable amount of research shows that developing brains and bodies of children are much more affected than adults. And there are clear indications of a link, though the research is not yet conclusive, between increased electromagnetic fields and autism spectrum disorders. The number of children to be diagnosed autistic doubles every five years now. Neurological disease, Parkinson's, MS, ALS, autism, learning disabilities in children, behavioral problem in children, that's all exploding exponentially. The only development that parallels the exponential increase that we observe in neurological disease is the exponential increase in exposure to man-made electromagnetic fields. We took 10 autistic children and went back to the sleeping location where the mother was when she was pregnant with that child and compared it with the sleeping location of a mother that gave birth to healthy children. We had 10 mothers in that group, 10 mothers in this group. And in the group of the autistic children, we found that the, the measurements that we got for the microwave exposure was elevated compared to the group of children that were normal. The fetus is affected. The exposure to man-made electromagnetic fields has become the first factor that could be isolated ever in autism that could predict autism. Despite overwhelming evidence of biological harm from this type of electromagnetic radiation, the utility industry has assumed the safety of smart meters without doing any testing. What about if thousands and tens of thousands and millions of people all did this? Oh, it would collapse in a day. You can't, you can't have radiation emitting surveillance devices on everyone's home. But we're in a very strange time in history where your power company that's supposed to be this innocent provider of electrical service has become your assailant. And you are required, in order to pr protect yourself, you are required to fight back. You are required to stand up and say, no, this is wrong, and I'm not going to permit it. It's that a device that is broadcasting and receiving wireless signals permanently has been surreptitiously placed in your home unnecessarily 
and without your permission and without proving itself scientifically. This is a test case for technological democracy if I've ever seen one. Dear Big Brother. I wish I could say you're acting like a brother, but unfortunately, an Orwellian Big Brother is what you have become. The problem is you've presumed you have the right to make decisions that are harming the quality of all of our lives, our health, and children, simply because you've been in charge of the distribution of a necessary resource in our lives. It does not matter why you have done this. There is no right way to force unproven and dangerous technology upon the world. And history has shown that being sorry after the fact for harming people through unproven medicines, technologies, is of no help. You do not have enough money to repay the harm that you are doing to all life. From the acknowledged dangers of genetically modified foods, to preventing new ways for people to generate energy, to invasive, untested devices for monitoring and control, you have created problems and forced false solutions in the name of saving the planet. Fighting terrorism. Or increasing corporate efficiency. You have even blatantly placed career lobbyists as your corporate yes-men, as heads of the very agencies that are supposed to protect the people. Now you are deploying wireless digital surveillance and broadcast devices upon everyone without disclosure. This is a preemptory attack against the principles of a free society and a taking away of our rights to make decisions. It is not your place to make these choices for us. By behaving this way, you have gone from an asset to society to a tyrant acting behind the cover of corporate freedom. You have gone from the brotherhood of man to the Orwellian Big Brother, who treads upon our trust and goodwill for profit and control only. This is no longer acceptable. You and your agents will be held financially and criminally liable for your actions as corporations and as individuals. The excuse of just following orders will be of no avail to those going along with this. We're now at a turning point when great numbers of people, even those on your payroll, those most subject to your campaigns of half-truths and skewed science, are beginning to see higher, are being inspired to speak out and bring down your dreams of dictatorship, and are courageously creating solutions. This is just the beginning. But as we begin to peel back the layers, we begin to realize that the smart meter issue is really more a symptom rather than a disease. And now we get it. And now we see behind the curtain. Millions of people are starting to wake up to what's occurring. The game is on. The ball is very much in our court. You know, we have a tremendous opportunity, but we have to engage in that game. While making this film, there was a part of me that just wanted to look the other way and put the lid back on the box I'd opened. But once I saw the magnitude of this issue, I thought of all the people in my life that I care about, and I knew that I had to share it as widely as I could. Whatever your political party or belief system, we're all in this together. And whether you came into this because of the risk to rights or privacy or health or security or cost or something else, it doesn't matter. What matters at this point is that we set our differences aside and we stop the deployment of this technology where we live. The only people I've come across who want this program are either misinformed or benefiting from the deployment. Instead of so-called smart meters and a smart grid, we need wise people who see what's going on and who realize that we all have the power to change our situation. Change happens when you make a decision and say, I will not have one of these devices on my home. There 
is no legal requirement for you to have one of these meters. Even though utilities are trying to intimidate people into accepting it, as if it was the law. To assert your choice and protect your foundational rights and health, you need to notify your utility. Otherwise, the choice will be made for you. Share this film online with everyone you know. You can also host a screening in your community or for your city council. It starts with us, but we are not alone. All around the world, this is a time of social awakening. A wave is sweeping the planet, inspiring millions of people to stand up to corrupt corporate governments. The veil of illusion is lifting, and we're all finding our voice. Because this agenda is being implemented as we speak, we all have to act now. Not only can we make a difference, but we must. Together, we will build a safer and more abundant world. For us, our children, and all future generations.